Hey, ChemStars, this is Mrs. Vandaloy bringing you another ChemStar video. We are still talking about different gas laws, and this is actually Gay-Lussac's law. Um, Gay-Lussac was the one that was relating pressure and temperature, uh, and again, is defined as Gay-Lussac's law. So it's the pressure and the temperature. So as we've done before, before I actually do this section, let's go look at that FET lab again. All right, here we go. So here's my setup and let me add some molecules there. So if I'm dealing with uh, pressure and temperature, that means I wanna keep my, um, my volume constant. So now that box can't do anything, okay? So what can I possibly do? I can heat this puppy up. All right, here we go. And notice what's happening. The temperature is going up and the pressure is going up. Holy cow, let's add some more heat. Oh, this is so much fun. All right, notice, oh my goodness, look what's happening. Uh, those molecules are moving so fast, they're colliding so fast, all right? They're causing so many more collisions that pressure is going up. Oh, let's do some more. All right, let's heat this up. Oh no, look what happened. It broke. Keep that in mind. All right, we're going to talk about that later. Okay, so I think you can tell that as temperature went up, pressure went up. All right, until the box exploded. Let's see what our notes have to say. All right, oops, oh, there you go. So, what kind of relationship is this going to be? Well, what do we say? As temperature went up, Pressure went up, that's d -d direct. Or you can also say if uh, temperature went down, pressure went down, okay? So why does uh, it have to be in Kelvin? Well, I've already explained that to you. That was the same as Charles's law because what might happen, you might have a negative pressure. Well, you can't have anti-collisions. That doesn't even happen in a black hole, all right? So um, you have to use the absolute uh, temperature scale, which is Kelvin, so that you don't have any infinite numbers or you have no negative pressures. You got to always stay in the positive. So you have to go down to the lowest possible temperature to start your, your temperature scale. So, hey, I can do that actually right now. So you go ahead and use your Kelvin. And this is your pressure. And I have the same scales before. All right, there you go. And it is a d -d -d direct relationship. Why do I keep doing that? Well, all right, because if it's d -d direct, what are we going to do, do? We're going to d -d divide. So pressure divided by temperature is our slope, is our constant. All right, it forms a linear graph. All right, so like one divided by 100, two divided by 200, uh, four divided by 400 are all going to be that same number. So once again, mathematically, um, if I have P, P1 over T1 equals some constant and P2 over T2 equals some other constant. No, is it another constant? No, it's the same constant. Duh. All right. So if A equals B and B equals C, therefore we can say those two terms are equal. So this is our equation that we'll be using. All right. So here are some um, explanations. Why do auto tire manufacturers recommend checking for pepper inflation before driving the car for more than one mile? All right, so what, what's happening here? Because what happens if you drive your car more than a, one mile? What's gonna happen? So I wrote the air in your tires before you're driving is cooler than the air in the tires after driving. Uh, the friction will cause an increase in temperature. I know that our newer car has uh, tire pressure sensors or whatever, you know, and, and it's part of the dashboard there. And in the wintertime, sometimes those tires are going to go like bing, bing, bing uh, because their, their pressure is too low because as temperature goes down, so does your, your pressure go down. So you're going to have lower tires. But um, what happens on occasion, all right, uh, if that happens and it's in the winter time, um, you're going to drive it. Maybe we're driving, you know, someplace further than than a mile. Um, what happens to the pressure inside the tires? They end up being okay. All right, so um, you don't have to inflate them. Let's say on a cold day, uh, unless they're still low after a while. Okay, so. Um, 
you want to, to check that, okay? So why do they check, or why do you have to do it for proper inflation before driving? Because you wanna make sure that, you know, after they warm up a little bit, you will have uh, an increase in pressure, okay? Now, number two is super duper important. Remember that, that fat lab I just showed you? What happened when I really went crazy with the temperature? What happened to that container? That lid flew apart, right? So why do aerosol cans say keep away from flames? If you're in a constant volume and you get that pressure so high, that container can burst, all right? So this is what I wrote. As temperature increases, pressure increases. All materials have a certain tensile strength, all right? Different materials have different tensile strength. If the pressure inside the can reaches that limit, then the can will explode, sending shrapnel. Just like that FET lab, that lid blew off, that would be perhaps shrapnel, okay? This has caused many serious accidents, so what? Don't do this at home, okay? Don't get any fun ideas or you did not hear it from me. People have lost eyes doing this. You don't want to do something stupid, okay? Please don't do that. All right, so mathematically, you're going to find out that this is going to look a lot like Charles's law. So I'm probably going to go through this a little bit more quickly because we already did it once. So um, here I have a uh, aerosol cans carry the warnings of their labels. Uh, they say not to incinerate or burn them or store cans above a certain temperature. This problem shows why it's dangerous to dispose of these cans in a fire. The gas is used in aerosol as the pressure. Does this look familiar? All right, that's just a tad above the 101.3 kilopascals, all right, which is standard pressure. All right, why would they have it just a little bit above standard pressure? So that when you press that little nozzle on the aerosol can, it'll go from high pressure inside the can to lower pressure outside. All right, if they didn't make it a little bit more um, pressure than atmospheric pressure, it wouldn't come out. All right, maybe if it was lower than atmospheric pressure, the air would be sucked into the can, and then what good is it, all right? So a little tidbit there for you. So if a can is thrown onto the fire, what will the pressure be when it reaches 928 degrees Celsius, all right? So obviously we're working with changes in pressure and changes in temperature, so I'm gonna use Galo-Sachs law. So here are my equations. Notice what I did with my temperatures. I made sure I added 273. So this becomes the numbers after I added. And so before I do any kind of fancy math, think about this. What the pre or excuse me, what the temperature do? Temperature went up, right? Temperature went up. Shouldn't pressure go up too? Let's check this out. Do you remember how I do this? All right. I need to do what? I need to cross multiply. So I need to multiply these two numbers and then divide by 298. Do you remember that? So um, I got 214, I'm oh, sorry, silly Mrs. Amanda White, 415 kilopascals, and what happened to pressure? It did go up. Now, let me just show you something real quick. Isn't this about 300, and that's about 1200? So didn't my temperature go up about 400? I'm sorry, four times, all right? So what do you think this was, 103 times four? Isn't that 412? Yeah, that's pretty close, isn't it? Okay, so again, the idea of K can actually help you maybe make sure your answers seem right. Okay, let's try the next one. Actually, I want you to check the next one. All right, so pause this, work it out, get out your calculator, all right, work your magic, and when you're all done, see how you did, okay? So why don't you pause this and go. Okay, hopefully you figured it out. Um, so again, right here's my equation. Here's where I plugged in the information. So here is my P1, here's my T1, but I had to add 273. I'm looking for the P2, and here's my T2. Again, I had to add 273. So this is after I, I added 273 to both things. And again, just real quick, what did, what did temperature do? It went from 800 something to 400 something. So temperature went down. What's your pressure do? Go down. Now again, let's just kind of look at these numbers. It is not quite going down by a half, is it? All right, 800 and something and 400 and something, but it's not 
quite a half. So this should go down not quite a half, all right, but it should be like three something, okay? Hey, guess what? It does, 3.78, and it did go down. That makes sense, okay? So here is the car problem. So go ahead and pause this and work on it yourself, please. Okie dokies, welcome back. Uh, again, here's the equation. I have 198, here's my P1, 27 is my T1. Here's my P2, all right? But what's a little bit different about this problem? What are you solving for? You're solving for T2. So how do I do that? Same as before, you're gonna, oops, hang on. Let me give you this part. All right, I added the 273. Notice I put a little dot there because there's a ones digit, so that's a ones digit. So what do I need to do? I need to uh, cross multiply, so 300 times 225, and then divide, divide by 198, okay? So what happened? Uh, pressure went up, so what should temperature do? Temperature should too, and I got uh, 341 Kelvin, so it did go up. But wait a minute, what do I want? Maybe I want to know what that is in, in Celsius. So how do I convert from Kelvin to Celsius? I don't add 273, I subtract 273. And so I got 68. So yeah, it did go up. Okay. Well, that's it for Gay Lussac. Uh, hopefully that makes some sense. Hopefully you know now why you should never throw an aerosol can in a fire, so don't do it. Um, you know, you, you saw it on fat, you don't see it yourself. And that's it. So we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.